Yo, welcome back to Good Game Reviews. Here to do another game review. Um, first of all, I want to apologize. I believe that I had put out the video for the prediction video, the New England Patriots versus the New York Jets video. I thought I put the prediction video out, but apparently some things went wrong and the video never went out. I like I literally checked the computer, saw it still buffering for some reason. I'm like, this is 24 hours later. Like this this video should have been sent through, but it's whatever. You know, I'm currently trying to send it in right now. If y'all still want to watch the prediction video, then go ahead. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the game because it is concluded. We are done with week nine. We are moving into week ten. And the Patriots sit at three and five. Who would have thought? I, enough with the sarcasm, but <laughs> let me go ahead and get into it. Let me go ahead and get into it. Uh, first, I want to just cover the positives. I like to do the good, good and the bad. I like to start off with the good first. Start off on a positive note. Let's start off with Cam Newton, a rarity in the good department. I mean, it has been a while since I've had a chance to include him in the good department because he, for some reason he just seems to struggle each and every game. And if he does do good, he puts the team in a bad position at the end. He didn't do any of that today. I mean, he of course he had, you know, a couple of, you know, bad throws. Um, he still has to work on his feet, stepping into his throws and stuff. But for the most part, he did a pretty good job. Um, was 27 for 35 tonight, had 274 passing yards. Uh, he only averaged 7.8 through the air. Um, had a pass rate of 99. But... What I liked from him was the fact that he looked a little more comfortable. I thought he was going to run a little bit more. He didn't, but when he had to get like those short yardage kind of things, he he did that. Um, he, he just looked a lot more comfortable, you know, just throwing the ball. And that's just something that, you know, he struggled with these past few weeks. Um, and apparently Jacoby Myers is – you know, his favorite target. So now he has, he has a guy that he, he, he likes to target um, other than Edelman because, you know, Edelman was, you know, he was dealing with his own issues, you know, not completely healthy, but that was like his only guy. So he, he targeted his only guy. And when it didn't work well, he tried to look at other options sometimes, but it just didn't really work out well for him. But now that he, it appears that Jacoby Myers is the new number one, he has a guy that he can, you know, consistently deliver the ball to. I mean, you look at Jacoby Myers' numbers. Let me go ahead and just touch on Jacoby Myers, man, because I just want to get into it for, with Jacoby Myers. Jacoby had 14 targets, 12 receptions for 169 yards. Now, tell me that doesn't sound familiar uh, or reminiscent to the Week 2 matchup against the Seahawks where Julian Edelman had double-digit receptions and... 179 yards i mean like it's it's it's, it almost looks exactly the same uh he averaged 14.1 um as far as per reception so he led in that department it just seemed like whenever cam newton found himself in a sticky situation he would just air the ball out and say oh you know jacoby myers he's he's got to be there He's, he's he's gonna catch this fires it to him and he pretty much you know takes care of it i mean the Jacoby Myers, what I'll say about Jacoby Myers is last year he had a really good start as far as like the preseason went. He was looking real nice. He was putting up record preseason numbers. Um, but we didn't really expect him to get too much time in because of what the Patriots had already had at that wide receiver position. Now, we all know the story from 2019, how everything just seemed to dwindle. And at one point, we're just depending on Myers as a consistent as a consistent starter. Now, we go into the season again, and we're not really expecting you know him to get too much time anyway because you got Julian Edelman to kill Harry and Demir Bird, and you're thinking that's going to be your main three. Um, you also were hearing nice things about Gunnar Olszewski at, uh, during the, uh, that limited time that we had in training camp, and you think that Jacoby Myers is going to have a time to show up. But once again, things happen. People get hurt. Jacoby Myers finds himself in the starting position, and he makes the most of it yet again. 
I like what we're seeing from Jacoby Myers in the second year, and it is a way better improvement than I've seen with Nikhil Harry. If we were to compare two guys coming in, and they came look, they came in on the, at the same year. One guy's drafted in the first round, the other guy's undrafted. They come in, they come to training camp, they impress in training camp, they get time. Yes, Nikhil Harry goes down with the injury in, in, pre, in the preseason, but Jacoby Myers, he he does what he has to do, but he still isn't able to you know be a starter that that at the beginning of that season. And they, you know, pretty much move, they transition, they deal, they're dealing with the same, you know, things as far as like, you know, how the season is going to start and whatnot. I'm looking at this year, but you got Jacoby Myers who made the most of his opportunities and you have Nikhil Harry who has failed to, you know, prove why he was worthy of that first round draft pick. I mean, if you look at these numbers, you would think that the roles will switch. It's, I mean, it's just amazing to think about it. But enough with the rant. Um, Demir Bird. I want to say this for the end, as as far as like injuries and whatnot. But Demir, I mean, not Demir Bird, but Damian Harris. Excuse me, Damian Harris. He went down late in the game uh, with a chest injury. Uh, he was questionable to return. He ultimately didn't return. Um, and. That's going to be if he's out for a, a good number of t- a, a good number of time. That's going to be a blow to the Patriots. Even though Sony Michelle is coming back, I personally like what Damian Harris has shown uh, this season, and I, I and it really is going to be you know a shame not to have him out there. He's averaging over five yards a carry, so it's 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 kind of difficult to you know think about, but hopefully he is not is it is it. It isn't anything too serious, and hopefully he can return uh, soon. Uh, we still have to pretty much wait on that, but that's the situation. But as far as his numbers went, he has 71 yards, um, average 5.1 on the ground, had a long of 21, and I think that 21 is, the one, is what got him to the 71 because uh, without that, he would have been at 50, and it would have been you know Rex Burkhead who you know had the most rushing yards. He had 56. He, had, he also had a pretty good game. Um, averaging 4.7 on the ground and having uh, the rushing touchdown. But, yeah, it's going to be a shame not having Damian Harris out there. Rex Burkhead has shown that, you know, he can step up when he needs to. We've seen these qualities from him time and time again. So, Patriots are definitely going to be relying on Rex Burkhead to do, you know, a lot of different things now. Um, and I'll go ahead and throw Demir Bird in there because he was he was pretty nice too. He had the big reception, uh, the thirty-one yard reception. Um, Jacoby Myers gave a good block, gave him a chance to get some extra yards and get close to the uh, goal. Um, but that's the I mean, hey, he got it done. So yeah. Um, one thing I would like to touch on as far as goods, I'll go ahead and throw this in. Don't get me, don't get it confused. This defense did not perform well. Not at all. You let this Jets team, this Jets team, put up 27 points. But I'll give them this one. I'll give them these two things. DJ Wise got the sack late in the game, which was a big help in getting the Patriots off the field on that on that last Jets drive that they had. And J.C. Jackson makes up for his mistakes and delivers a very needed interception that you know resulted in the Patriots able to you know go down the field and make something happen. So I'll give them that. I'll go ahead and I'll give them that. Um, but let me go ahead and stick with the good for right now. Nick Folk. Nick Folk. Now you know how if if you've been listening to me for a while, you know how I feel about Nick Folk. I do not hold him in high regards. I have constantly said that this guy is the worst kicker, but I have to give him his props tonight. I can't I can't shy away from it. I, I have to give it to him. He is the reason why we won the game. Not the sole reason. Don't get it twisted. But he delivered the uh, game winning field goal. So I have to give him his props. On top of that, he was he was pretty much perfect. Three for three, long, had a long of fifty one. Kicked all his extra points. He he was good. He was good on all everything that they needed him to do. He delivered on. So 
congratulations, Nick Folk. You were in the good category. You were you were possibly the MVP if it wasn't for Jacoby Myers. But there you go. <laughs> now let's go ahead and get into the bad. And with the bad, I hate to do this, but I have to put it on the secondary. It's just like, and it's rare for me to criticize the secondary when there's so so much going wrong with the defense. But the secondary did not make this easier. I mean, this is where you're supposed to deliver. They can't run the ball. Frank Gore, before this game, was averaging 3.3. He was averaging 3.3 on the season. You don't have to worry about the run. You have to worry about those guys out there on the outside. You have to worry about those receivers. And you're giving up touchdowns. You're falling on the ground. I, I, I don't know if it was an issue with the turf, but like it just seemed like they weren't up, you know, just up to par you know, with the usual standards that, you know, we usually hope when we, we hope we hold the secondary to high standards because we know that the secondary is really good, but that just didn't show tonight. And against this team of all teams, because they've gone against better receiving options, but against this team of all teams, this is the night where you just want to completely collapse. It just didn't make any sense to me, especially in J- in Jason McCourty's um, uh, case. Cause I thought he did kind of nicely. Um, looking at last game it, it wasn't perfect but he he did all right but this game it just seemed like he was he didn't have a chance it just seemed like like nothing was going right for him and you know i won't give jc jackson too much flack because it just seemed like this was an off night for him and he did and he did get the interception so i kind of you know get making it a little easier on him but jason mccordy i just don't know what it is and it's obvious that they are missing Stefan Gilmore. I don't know how long they're going to have to go without him, but yeah. Also, this is more of a negative on the coaching staff, really. Not so much the defense, because we know that the defense has struggled at times during the season. They really struggled today. Um, we know that the run defense is good. We know that we're having problems at linebacker. I know this. But this is the problem that I had as far as from the coaching uh, aspect of this. The Patriots are playing John Simon and DJ Wise on the edge way too much. Way too much. Okay. Um, Bauer. Playing him also a little bit too much. You have to put you have to put Chase Winovich in this game. You have to have him playing at the minimum. 75% 75% of the snaps more more on uh, 80 on that side you have to have him playing 80% of the snaps you got to have him out there majority of the time you cannot sit him on the bench and let these other guys come and be your main pass I know you're concerned about the I know the Patriots they're concerned about stopping the run they want those big bodies out there on the edge Chase Winovich has struggled at times to stopping the run but you need to have Chase Winovich out there because when I say there was a lack of pressure, DJ Wise had the only sack of the game, and that was at the end. When they when they desperately needed it, one sack from DJ Wise. But the guy who pretty much leads your team in sacks, 2.5, which is just completely ridiculous, but you don't have him out there. You limit his time, and you don't give him a chance to be the playmaker that he can be. On the other end of that, uh, since we're at it in terms of like talking about pass rushers, Josh Uche, where was he? You didn't think at all to throw him on the field. Didn't think at all to th- didn't think at all to put him in on one drive, one play, not even one play when the defense was having trouble getting to the qu- to the quarterback. Didn't have a didn't have any type of you know pressure on the quarterback until the end of the game. You got Josh Uche just sitting there on the bench. He isn't. He wasn't inactive. He wasn't hurt. So what was the problem? You would rather put in Therese Hall, a practice squad guy. You would rather put a practice squad linebacker who hasn't seen any time, hasn't been elevated to the active roster once before this game, 
just completely an afterthought and you have your second round second pick of the draft and Josh Uche a guy that you should be counting your lucky stars that you was able to that you was able to even grab him because he didn't even he didn't even really participate in, in the combine that's the that's pretty much one of the only reasons why they were able to get him at such a low pick I think he could have get we could have went higher but you have this guy just sitting on the bench and then you have this Pratt squad guy out here playing pretty much majority of the snaps Pro- possibly more than a lot of the defensive players that was on the field so and this is a practice squad guy you got this this guy who it just didn't make any sense to me why they didn't even consider putting Uche out there is he a bust do they not feel comfortable with him because the limited things that we saw last week in Buffalo you thought that would have gave the Patriots confidence in putting Uche out there when Bentley went down, he provided some some pretty good, you know, pressure and some some stops at times. He wasn't like making tackles or nothing, but he was he was out there providing a lot more than I thought Bentley was doing. It just it just it just really confuses me to be honest. It really does that they they that they would just consider Hall over Uche. So that's my problem with the coaching as far as like as far as like just decisions on personnel. Just something that, you know, I don't know. Hopefully Josh Uche at one point can get out there and can play, you know, more snaps. With Bentley is is not I'm not sure how long he's gonna be out, but they have they have to they have to understand what they have in this kid and they gotta give him chances. If you're gonna give Jennings chances and you're going to give Hall of all people chances, then you got to give Uche some chance. You got to at least put him out there one time. This was just, it wasn't like no big game. And this, and this still ended up being a slugfest. Possibly could have, possibly could have, you know, been a little easier if you had the right personnel out there. Uh, that's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. I'm not going to harp on that too long. Um, Other things that I thought were bad about this game. If I can stay on coaching, really play calling, uh, particularly one particular uh, play where it was fourth and one, or it was either like fourth and one or fourth and inches, and all you have to do is pretty much rush the ball again. They're not going to stop it. Cam Newton is two hundred and forty-five pounds. You could you could easily just rush that quarterback sneak, get it, or hand it off to to Rex Burkhead. He was he was in, in on that play. He was doing nicely. Just hand it off to him. I'm sure he can get one yard. But you wanted to go for some little tricky, you know, you know, Cam Newton's going to keep it and swing around and try to run. And then he ends up falling. It's, it was just ridiculous. I just, it, it just didn't seem like a good decision, you know, at all. And I mean, the, the play calling, it was okay. But it has to get a lot better. I expect a lot more from Josh McDaniels. I know a lot. There's a lot of Patriots fans who are not fans of Josh McDaniels, uh, especially this season. But I expect a little more of him. I know he's a lot better than that. You just got to do a better job on play calling. That's all. Don't don't get too fancy. Don't get in your own heads and thinking you got to outsmart the Jets. Like you don't. Just run the run the ball and get one yard. They're not, they're obviously they're not going to stop. Him. They didn't even have Quentin Williams out there tonight, so you, they're not they're not going to stop you up the middle. You could easily punch that through. That's all I'm saying. Um, but it's a good win. Um, well, not a good win, but it's it's a dub all the same. You know, I'm glad that they were able to get the W. I'm glad that they're not two and six, and you know they're three and five, but. Yeah, let's just let's just celebrate this dub going into next week. They're gonna have to go against the Ravens. Hopefully, you know Uche can get some time. I, I know it's more problems than you know linebacker, but get them some time next week. Just just give them some time next week. We're going against the Ravens, so come on, come on. Um, but yeah, um, Ravens next week. That's a Sunday night game. Hopefully, my uh, prediction video can come in on time. But we're just moving with the punches. So that's all I got to say about that. 
Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Stay tuned for more content. I'm out.